Hi, I'm Fomal Grostraktor and this is a short guide for running tier 1 abyssals aka column filaments with a passive tanked rapid light caracal. So this is not a kiting fit as you can see it has uh, it has pretty low cap with the prop mod on. So you basically only use the MWD for mobility in bursts. But overall it's pretty cheap and it's easy to use. This should be fine for all weather types of tier 1 and with tech 2 launchers I imagine this is pretty fine for all weathers of tier 2 filaments as well. Tier 1 is pretty light on EWAR so it's a good place to start out learning abyss running. In tier 2 you need to know what kind of EWAR you need to shoot on first so it's a bit harder and you need kind of experience to see what's the dangerous types for you for your fit. For example for a caracal like this I would say the new thing uh, mobs are the most dangerous ones. Then I guess webs, then paints, and then scrams. I, I put scrams really low on the list because this isn't a kiting fit, so it can kind of if you get scrammed down, you can just take some punishment. Uh, target priority is pretty simple in tier ones, and we'll be running a couple in this video. Basically, if uh, in the room there's a battleship, you want to kind of sp spiral towards in, spiral in towards them, and orbit them as close as you can, like 500 meters or 1,000 meters, and shoot the small stuff first, and then the battleship. If there is Triglavian ships in the room, so Vedmax or Damavix, uh, you want to shoot the Dama Vedmax first, and then the Damavix, and then everything else. For example, if there's a Newting frigate and a Damavik in the same room, so let's say it's a, a Lucid Fire Watcher and some kind of Damavik, then I would go for the Fire Watcher, the Neuter first. But this is something you decide based on your experience with the, a specific fit and different tiers. Damage type, so I would use weather specific ammo. So for exotics, uh, use Scourge. And for Gammas use Nova. And I would always use Fury if I have T2 launchers. Because the application bonus doesn't really matter much with light missiles. And they're cheaper and they have more DPS so that's great. So the exception is uh, in electricals, so the EM penalty ones. I would actually use Inferno instead. Because if, if you look at uh, Rogue drone battleship resistance profile and the Triglavian ship damage profile no, I mean resistance profile then I think Inferno is a bit better for the tiers that are so low maybe from tier 3 and starting you'd use Mjolnir instead but tier 1 and maybe tier 2 as well I would say Inferno probably wins out and for darks since they don't have a resistance penalty I would use Inferno as well from this fit uh, for metaing down, I'd say you can meta down the launchers for tier 1s, but I don't suggest it for tier 2s. I'd say you need about like 220 DPS for tier 1 filaments, and I guess for tier 2s, like 320 to 330 is a good number to start out with. For 300 plus DPS, uh, Fury helps a lot. And basically, the more DPS you have, the more filaments you can run in an hour. So that's more ISK for you. Drones, I would say, take weather specific ones, but it doesn't really matter a lot. The drones are really squishy because uh, Kraggle doesn't have an EHP bonus to drones. So I would mainly use them to help DPS with battleships. But don't use it for the battle cruiser room. Battle cruiser, the rogue drone battle cruiser, he just eats drones. So you generally want to stay away from him and stay with stay away with your drones from him. Okay, so let's take this into some filament. Let's check that everything is online. Uh, I'll be using Scourge, well, Navy Scourge for the first exotic, and then I'll use some Fury. 
Make sure everything is online, nothing has heat damage. Got some paste, got some filaments. Got some Intel channels open. Got some local open, warping to the safe. And I'm reloaded. Uh, for a uh, for a uh, overview tab, I basically use a, a default tab that just has all everything on it, because there isn't really a lot of clutter in the filament rooms, so all is just fine. And I like having a velocity column and a transversal column and name and type. So first things, uh, hardener is on. And then in most rooms, if there's like no battleships and stuff, you can just burn in straight for the bioadaptive cache. And let's look that's up. Oh, that's not the right cache. And let's just shoot one of the rats. Pretty far from this, so let's do one cycle of prop mode for now. And I have uh, 55 range. So once this dies, I shoot one volley towards the cache. If the cache blows up, make sure you uh, start moving towards it again because you stop moving. This is pretty easy, these are just nondescript sleeper cruisers. Let's see, five more ammo. If I run out of ammo before he's dead, I might use drones to finish it though. I think that might be the case. A module has run out of charging. You want to keep an eye out that the uh, rats are targeting you and not the drones. A yellow box, so don't want him shooting much. And I'm almost through the reload, so I can do one cycle. And that's fine. Generally, you want to reload before you take the next room, but 19 ammo out of 20, I think I'd say that's enough. Turn the pop mode off. Oh, so Lucy did deep watcher. This guy's pretty much just really, really tanky. So let's look, go loot first, then just shoot him. I'll put my drones on him already as well. In the burst of prop mode, getting low on cap. Let's get the deepest on him now. And I can do one more to close the distance. Actually, let's just orbit the gate. If by the time you've looted, you aren't done killing everyone, then I basically just orbit the gate. And Lucid Deep Watcher is one of the rat types that's one of the battleship types that's basically just the deepest check. You can get runs where you have two of the rooms with them. So if you have like 150 DPS or something low, then you won't be able to clear them. Has run out of charging. But I think when I measure, you need like 220 or 230 for them to make sure the room takes less than six minutes. 
And if a room takes seven minutes, then you can't do three seven minute rooms in one run. But yeah, this room is pretty FK. Okay. yellow box for a moment but it didn't switch to drone so doing that things loot wise it's been pretty average like you get the survey databases and the zero point condensate in pretty like predictable quantities from runs but stuff like filaments and uh, mutaplasmids and and skill books uh, really increase the amount of money you get. But you can basically, for example, in darks you get no condensate. You only get ISO Gen 10. So you should expect some quantity of them. There's actually two reloads. Oh man. Make sure you have enough ammo as well. This is a uh, 100 ammo per reload. So I got four more reloads. I don't think I would like to go into another filament right afterwards if I only had 400. Like I'd, I'd carry like 5,000 or maybe 10,000 at a time if you're not worried about losing the ship. Let's get the drones in. If you use drones, make sure you always get them in your bane. And since I was solo, let's reload as well before I go hop into the next room. And let's turn off the hardeners as well while I lo wait for the reload to regenerate cap a bit up. And when it reaches like around here, I'll hop in because the animation takes a bit, bit of time. And you need a bit of time to figure out what you want to shoot as well. Drones are in, jump in. And well, the first thing, just to get you moving, you can just start moving towards the cache, reactivate hardeners. And Let's let you the frigates first. I frigates tend to shoot drones quite a bit, so I don't want to get the drones in, drones out on them. So I'm a bit worried about that. Actually, I can put the drones on the cache, so I don't have to you. I don't have to waste those. I don't think this guy can... Oh, he's yellow boxing. Yeah, he's going for the drones. Recall. And, well, you see, I brewed up. And now I stopped moving. And that's bad. So I need to reissue the movement co uh, command. And that's already dead. So reload. And since this is the origin conduit, let's go loot one of the sub nodes as well just to see what it's like if this sort of a setup t1 cruiser and tier 1 filaments is in your like it, the right thing for income bracket then i would suggest uh looting the nodes at least in the last room after you've cleared if you spend a lot of time doing them in the first or second room you might run into time trouble but like I know I have 11 minutes left 
I can really just loot this. It's not too too significant, but it's a nice bonus on top. So let's see, I got a uh, couple mil from here, nothing, n nothing too fancy. What I like to do in a system I choose for a thing is I just have a couple of uh, safes around it. And just cycle between them. And if you're looking at this video and you get any smart ideas, then no, this is not the system I actually use. Let's do another calm exotic and then wrap it up. If we're lucky, we'll see some Triglavian rats, or we'll see, I guess, a Charybdis Tyrannus room. Would be interesting. The Drifter Battleship. After you land, you'll have the warp invulnerability, so I just move a bit and then stop ship. We already saw this room, it's pretty easy. Make sure you get hardeners on. They stay on between rooms. Oh, I wanted to use Fury here. I'll recharge Fury at the end of this room. Uh, the adaptives stay on between the rooms, but if you exit the filament, they go off, so... Very important with active tank ships as well, that you turn it on. I think this is like three flights. No, I think it's four. If they're really far away, you want to count so you don't waste a lot of DPS. And let's get the Hornets on this guy. Even if he switches, I don't think he'll do very much damage. And. Okay, so this guy already died. We call drones. And let's try the other rooms with Fury. And since there's no enemies left here, I'll turn off the adaptives and prop mod a bit. And prop to the gate, turn it off. Let's get the adaptive cycling already. And I got the fury in now, so I have less range now, but more DPS. Which is really good for the lucid deep watcher room we saw. The same thing. Approach the cache. Then process what what you have in the room. In tier 1s it's easy because you get like max 6 rats, but uh, in like tier 4s you can get probably like 20 or more. And let's do one circular prop mod here to get to the room faster. Here we see a blue cloud. Uh, this increases the signature radius of you and the rats if they're inside it for this kind of a fit with uh, extenders and uh, CDF rigs you have a lot of signature so you generally want to stay away from them but you have if you have like an active tank fit or an armor fit with especially with heavy assault missiles you want to sit in them because they really help your application against strats but with light missiles you it's not really a problem, and you generally want to avoid them. And reload. 
top ship so we don't overshoot it. Oh man, this is very statistically average loot. Ah, oh, it's a good place for learning. What off? I could have waited a bit more with the reload. Oh, and no fun room, sadly. But like, y m my health isn't really dropping much, so... Let's get the illuminator here first, like... You can also control click to lock up here, through the UR, if you don't know. And this Aegis would really like to go for my drones. So I want to kill them first because I want to put the drones on the cache. Since I'm so far away from this and this room is almost, almost done, let's do a bit more prop modding. Reload. Adapt this off. These are pretty far away. The not so eh. Some agitated. Some more combs. So this one took like 5 minutes, I think the last one was like 10 minutes, so uh, like 15 minutes then. Two filaments with, with this amount of deepest. I guess this beats out uh, uh, normal Vexor ratting, but uh, VNI ratting is better than this. Tier two, fi well, tier three definitely beats out Vex or Ratting, but tier two, I don't know. It depends on your luck, I guess. And this is pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching.